Hello, Adrian. Good morning, Mr. Dowling. How are you, Michael? Good, thanks, mate. Good, thanks. Great to have you on, on this morning and having a quick chat about the market and so on. For those of you out there that don't know who Adrian Brookman is, uh, he's a buyer's agent that works with a lot of our buyers um, in the local area, predominantly around the northern districts, but does sort of handle other areas. Uh, he works for Oasis Scheme, buyer's agents. Um, and he also does do quite a lot, lot of the auctions around the, the northern districts. Um, Unfortunately, not for McGraw, but, but for a lot of our competitors, may we say. Um, and yeah, you know the market quite well because of that, don't you, Adrian? So it's good to have you on board yeah. this morning. Yeah, yeah how, no, are you, how, how are you finding the market? Well, Michael, it's obviously um, different times today than before all this started. And I think uh, you, you probably agree yourself when it all first happened, uh, going back four or five weeks ago, there was a bit of a oh God, what's, what's going on? This is so different. Um, do we buy, do we sell, et cetera. But I think in the last, especially the last uh, couple of weeks, there's a, a little bit of, well, this is the way of the land at the moment. Um, this is the way we are doing things. And the buyers that might have just wanted to wait and see what happened in that first week or two have realised, and I think from the discussions we've had in the last week or so you're definitely transacting and you are finding um you've got quite good inquiry on all mm. of your properties and i would suggest as well based on talking with other agents that inquiry i dare say is picked up today compared to what it was about four to five weeks ago so look definitely. real estate always you know as we know real estate always chugs along you know i've been in around for 25 years you've been around for you know for, for quite a few yeah, good 11, time. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. So we've seen ups and downs in the market. Obviously, this is unprecedented, but you know, it's a it's a resilient marketplace, the city marketplace, and especially this northwestern district area as well. So um, I, things are happening. I, I couldn't agree with you more. We're definitely, like you said, we're definitely noticing it chugging along. Uh, that's probably a good way to put it. I, I I agree with you. Over the last sort of two three weeks, the consumer confidence, so the buyer confidence, is definitely increasing. We're getting a lot more inquiries on properties that are new to the market. Uh, we're getting a lot of inquiry on properties that were, were even on the market sort of during the, the COVID period and that sort of that two to three week eye of the storm, as we're calling it now. Um, so there's definitely there's definitely a lot more confidence now compared to two weeks ago. But overall, like uh, there is things that we're having to sort of navigate and, and change and, and obviously the way we work and, and the way we operate. Um, how are you finding things as far as sort of private appointments and, and things like that and helping your clients out? Are you doing anything differently at the moment to sort of guarantee your clients the right property? Well, um, you know, normal, normal, uh, normal process going back four, five, six weeks ago, um, depending on the, the time restraints of my client. Yes, you could you know, put them in the car, drive around, you know, you'd set your open houses up. You might have three, four on a Saturday or whether it be during the week. So it was very easy to, to get into those properties. And I think, again, from the discussions that we have had, you know, you are really needing to qualify um, that mm. buy, which wouldn't just be qualifying them on, okay, the normal questions would be, you know, how long you've been looking for, have you got your finances in place, but you're really trying to qualify them and pin them down, okay, is this the would this be the property you are actually looking for? Because firstly, you don't want to waste their time, but importantly, you don't want to waste your client's time as then the owner, okay. the vendor of the property. Your vendor's engaged you to sell the property, get the right buy down um, to their home, which is the, the way it is normally, but especially at the moment. So mm. I, as a, as a buyer's agent, are, are really doing a lot of that qualifying with my buyer. Um, and I also, you know, the relationships I build up with the agents in the, any given area that, I, that I'm working in. I don't want to waste their time. So I am really pinning down that particular property. I'm, I'm using the technology available to us. A lot of the agents, including yourself, Michael, you've done the walkthroughs, you've done the videos. I'm looking at the size of the property, really taking close um, concentration on aspect. Um, you know, it's, it's quite easy to, to be able to get as much information as possible before you even pick up the phone. Uh, mm. to the actual agent and start asking some other specific questions about the property. So we're all yeah. having to work, I think, a bit smarter um, at the moment, and that's all to benefit our clients. You as an owner, you, sorry, you as, a, as an agent dealing with owners, it's important for, you know, for owners to really in, engage with an agent that is, is fully committed to, to the buyer and is really very good in that follow-up and qualifying that buyer. So that's really going to help that, that vendor sell by using a, a professional agent in their marketplace.
Yeah, definitely. I mean, we're experiencing the exact same thing. We we're just talking prior to the discussion, prior to coming on Zoom about the buyer appointment that I had earlier this morning at 8.30am and guaranteeing that you can get both parties to the property uh, for the first inspection. I mean, previously we would have a, a husband turn up to a property, want to see it prior to obviously the rest of the family seeing it. And in, in today's transactional market where things are happening prior to auction and most owners are keen to sell prior to auction, I'm just recommending to a lot of buyers that, that if there's any decision makers out there that need to come and see the property, whether it be four or five people, make sure you're all down there at once and you can sort of do a relay of inspection. So two of them can go into the property at one yeah. time come out and sort of tag the others, they can go in and then have a look around and then at least the whole family's seen it initially. Yeah, absolutely, um, absolutely. Yeah. and that's gonna give the buyer that power to be able to whack, because as you know, normally it's uh, um, the, the husband, the wife, the dad, whoever might look at it and then relay back, okay, I think this is good for you, come down and have a look yeah. at it. And that could be, you might be able to get those different people through within a day, within a couple of days, but the way it's working at the moment, um, you know, you, that, those appointments, uh, you could be spending three or four hours at the one property doing back-to-back 15-minute appointments. But once you finish that, you're going to move on to the next property. So you might not be able to get back to that property that day, mm. which means if there's somebody else that was more in tune to what's needed to be done and has managed that time effectively, they're going to be able to act before you as a buyer has actually been able to, you know, get things in place and get the people down. So it's a very important point to be thinking about. Yeah, 100%. And I think I, you made a pretty good point before about the qualification process. And I mean, as an agency, uh, myself, Chris, Johnny, like we, we've actually refused buyers inspections over the last two weeks. Um, because like you said, we're not wasting owner's time and we're not wasting the buyer's time as well. Like we've got a lot of buyers. It's going be hard to do, hard for that buyer to accept very hard. That sometimes, isn't it? And it's it? very hard for us as well. Very hard for us because, I mean, previously we would have no problem showing someone for a property that wants to buy in six months' time just because it helps that research process. And usually that type of buyer would be coming down to an open home and they're not, they're not able to do that at the moment. So I can understand how they still want to come through and still want to have a look, but Obviously, when we're now in that transactional stage where properties are selling and owners owners are having to do so many one-on-one -on -one inspections for properties, we don't just want to waste an owner's time with, with that sort of the looker at the moment, I suppose you'd call them. Um, but it is still important that we educate them. So we are taking the, the virtual walkthroughs and so on. I'm encouraging a lot of my buyers at the moment to work with buyers agents as well, like yourself, because... I find the quality of, of education that the buyer gets from a buyer's agent point of view and, and some agents like myself and, and my team, we do try and educate the buyers about sort of what's happening and, and yeah, how to act on a property so you don't miss out and, and how to negotiate effectively to sort of give them a good starting point and obviously give them, give them the sort of best look as far as how serious they are to the owner's eyes because that's, that's part of the negotiation that a lot of buyers don't understand. They try and start the negotiation too far away from the process and yeah. to an owner, but it just doesn't look like they're a serious buyer. So, yeah. so I, I, think I, I think that's, yeah, it's, that's a really good point. What you brought up there, Michael, is that especially if a buyer is sort of, isn't experienced in the marketplace or maybe it might be one of their first times buying a property, you know, in my mm. experience, um, agents out there today are very professional. They are there to, you know, doing the right thing by the buyer and are trying to um, walk the buyer through what they do need. But obviously you as an agent, you're employed by the vendor to get the best possible price. And yeah. Sometimes don't, and buyers don't always um, don't always understand that. And, that. and you know, the example you gave me the other day where you had a property that was selling and a buyer came in with a really low offer and mm. you had another buyer that was putting the right offers in that needed to buy the property and you were trying to contact that buyer, but they were maybe, you know, getting advice off Uncle Tom or whoever it may be or reading everything that's in the media about the mm. way the market is actually performing. But at the coalface, we know it's different. We know there's buyers out there transacting. They weren't returning a phone call. Um, mm. Now, I suppose, you know, as a buyer's agent, we are doing a lot of that work. And you know when you, if I pick up, if you pick up the phone to me or any other buyer's agent calls you and they say, okay, I've got a buyer that's looking for a three-bedroom home in this particular street in Ride, you know that I've done all the work and done all the qualification and have set the buyer up about where the values are today because it is a, it has been a changing market. So, you know, mm. as a buyer's agent, as a real estate agent, you need to work with your vendors, really get a, a definite grasp. But it's ever-changing, as you know, week to week, month to month. But at the moment, 
trying to get a grasp on where those values are. You don't want to, you know, price the property away from your good buyers, and I don't want to, um, you know, price the property away from my buyers as well, letting them know that, well, it should be here when it really is there. So a lot of work goes into all that, and I think it's uh, important to always talk to professionals and to and to and to understand where 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 they're coming from as well. Yeah, definitely, mate. I think that's part of the process that you add value. But I think from an agent from an agent point of view, like there's a, there's a lot of I mean situations out there, whether it's a, a sort of thriving market or whether it's a sort of challenging market, like we're in now. At the end of the day, I think the education process and and being genuine from a helping a buyer out like yourself or, or whether it be helping an owner out. I think that's, that's where there is, there is a lot of agents that do miss the boat in regards to that as far as sort of making sure that people are well educated and, and understand that, yeah, we're just trying to help. We're just there to help. And I think having, having someone on both sides is always a good scenario in a negotiation because obviously your best interest is to look after the buyer. Our best interest is to always get a best price for our owner. Uh, obviously we do want to help a buyer get that family home and, and fulfill that dream. But, um, yeah, we, we can't lose sight of who we're working for. Um, and I, I think from, from we've, we've had a few discussions now as far as obviously clients in the area and, and clients that you've brought through some of our properties. I think a few things that buyer's agents can really add is, I mean, first of all, um, the agent takes the buyer a lot more seriously. That's the first, that's the first part of the process. If a buyer's agent contacts me, whether it's yourself or, or a few of the other buyer's agents I work for, we automatically take that buyer a lot more seriously than a, than a normal buyer because they're being pre-qualified and, and working with a buyer's agent. So they're seeking professional help. Um, second of all, you qualify that buyer. So the properties that you're going to see with us is basically a lot more minute and you don't need to see a wider range because you know really how serious and what type of property that buyer is after. So yeah. it does, yeah. does help the process. I mean, as far as your sort of thoughts at the moment, like is there any anything else that you, you help with in the process that can really help them gain that confidence in the market and, and help sort of to make decisions? Well, I think, you know, when it's, um, it, it's really, it's in, as you know, it's information. It's, it's getting mm. all the information, firstly, finding out the exact brief of what the buyer is looking at, but really getting as much information to allow them. And, you know, education is what helps people thrive in life. And it's the same, mm. you know, when we're talking about, um, you know, buying real estate. If people aren't going into a property and going into a transaction with all the information at hand, they feel uncomfortable. So it's, you know, it's my job as a buyer's agent, your job as a as an agent working with your vendor to ensure that everything is laid out there on the table. And it's, it's it real estate's a long game. So it's not just talking about, okay, well, this is where things are today, but this is where things were with the property. And in these areas five or 10 years, ago this is the sort of infrastructure that's in place over the next five or ten years this is why these particular areas this particular street's a good street why the street's not a good street so sometimes you know when a buyer might send a property to me oh what do you think about this and then i look at it and if i don't know the exact location before i respond i will look into other parts of the property you know look why other parts of the area why that mm. area why that street may be good may be bad and sometimes it, 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 it doesn't take a huge amount of work to do that but a lot of buyers don't actually realize well actually i didn't think about why that property on the lower end of the street if it's set down a little bit from the street mm. isn't going to be popular with a particular type of the marketplace and and while today it, it seems a bit cheaper why is this property cheaper to the one around the corner now mm. As we know, the properties are a little bit cheaper on the median house price in those areas. There's usually a particular reason. And if the market does start changing, if that person wants to sell in that particular market, they're always the properties that are the hardest to sell. And I really try to make sure that my buyers are very much aware um, about yeah. maybe compromises they, they, they do want to make or compromises they shouldn't make. Um, mm. when, uh, when buying a property. So it, it's really um, laying it all out on the table and, and putting myself in the buyer's shoes. Um, why, would, why are they wanting to buy this property? Do I think it's a good idea? And I've, I've got no hesitation in, you know, advising them. But also, the, you know, the, the decision's always theirs and we always run with uh, always Yeah, run it's excellent. What they, what they wish to do. Well, I think that's the big thing, mate. I think it's the same as sort of obviously our goals with with a vendor is making sure you've got their best interest at heart as far as sort of digging a little bit deeper and understanding why. Like with me, understanding why an owner's selling and is this the right market for them to sell in? Um, is, is it is it the right situation for them to make a move or or is it the best advice for them to wait and, and hold off for a while? Um, there's always 
is always putting yourself in their shoes. And I think that's a really good comment. So we, we try and do that a lot with our vendors as well as buyers when, when we're trying to help some buyers. Um, and understanding sort of a little bit deeper about if they don't like that property, well, hang on, there's one around the corner that might actually tick a lot of those boxes. How about I get you through that one? Because it is on the higher side and it is a flatter block and no easements and things like that. So I think that's a really good point you make. Um, so yeah, I, I think over the next few weeks, I think it's going to be interesting times. I think, yeah, we're, we're basically seeing a, a day on day improvement as far as the, mm. the, the health rate and, and the, the cycle, I suppose, of the, the COVID-19. But I think overall, the, the impact um, that sort of has flowed on into the real estate market, I think auction, online auctions and private inspections are becoming the new norm. I think people are accustomed to it. Confidence is increasing. Uh, I feel as though there's sort of going to be a lot more transactions over the next few weeks. What, what's your take? What's your thoughts? Yeah, I, I, I think you're exactly right there, Michael. I think um, we know that April was always going to be quiet anyway because of, mm. you know, the uh, Easter holidays and school holidays and the exact days. So yep. going back before all this happened, looking as an auctioneer and looking at bookings, April was always going to be quiet. So leading into now getting to the new norm, school holidays uh, finished into May, June and July, I think combined with what seems to be improving. Now, we're obviously not health experts. We're not commenting on what's happening no. in, out there. But as a layman, it seems to be that things are improving and the government seems to have been doing a good job as long as mm. we don't get lazy. Now, that's then going to, I think, reflect generally into the economy as well. Um, you know, once real estate's restrictions are lifted in regards to open houses and, and then being allowed to have on-site auctions and I'm looking forward to that day as, a, as an auctioneer yeah. uh, let me tell you but at the moment people are you know getting used to what is actually happening yeah. um, and you know and I suppose at the moment there has been you know I know that you're getting called into more properties today than what you were um, you know four five six weeks mm. ago I suppose that phone you know the inquiry about coming in for a pros might have dried up but I think it's starting to pick up again but I think Again, people not realising April was always going to be that way. So yeah. um, getting back to that statement, the real estate market chugs along. People need to upsize, downsize, um, move out of the area for jobs or whatever it may be. So um, things are always going to be happening in real estate. And then once these restrictions lift and the confidence starts coming back from the sellers to put their properties on the market the buyers uh, are going to have you know a little bit more uh, to choose from as yep. as well so it's you know it's, it's, it's good times to be thinking about what are we going to do where do we want to be in the next three to six months time 100 percent, 100 percent. couldn't agree with you more where, um where, where, where do you um based like based on that what we're talking about you know when all this started four or five weeks ago to today have you seen, where you're coming from a cold phase, dealing with the vendor and the buyer, where have you seen the confidence? Where have you seen prices? Did you see much of a correction? Has that some of that correction been come back a bit or are we still at those sort of levels? So what's, what's your take on that, Michael? Yeah, so around the right area, uh, obviously we have seen a slight correction in some properties. I think you mentioned it before, that the harder properties to sell are the sort of biggest that have been affected. So things with big easements running through or flood affected properties, um, odd shaped blocks or main roads, those properties have become harder to sell in, in this challenging time. Um, so the prices on those ones have been affected a little bit more than just a normal property. Um, but the, the price correction hasn't been that great. Like we're noticing across the board, maybe a 3% adjustment um, overall from eight weeks ago, nine weeks ago, which isn't a lot. And some properties are even sort of getting similar prices to what they were getting eight, nine weeks ago still. And Obviously, we can't comment on the future and, and what sort of impact this will have in the real estate space over the next six or nine months. But um, from an owner's point of view, the supply levels out there at the moment are incredibly low. And, and we are noticing a lot of inquiry on, on properties that go on the market. I had one which I launched last week in West Stride. And in the space of one week, we had 73 inquiries on, on the one property. Now, that, that converted over to 21 inspections because not all of them are qualified, like I was saying before. But to get over 20 in physical inspections on one property within the first week in this current time, it's, it's yeah resonating to a low supply market, which means that probably prices are going to remain stable for a little bit. That's the reality. Absolutely. Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Look, yeah. Uh, even if you know the buyer demand has dropped off a bit, which 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 we know which we know it has, which was un, which is understandable. We've always thought mm. that. Um, the thought process was obviously in hindsight, we're all geniuses. We don't know exactly what's going to happen with nobody has a crystal ball, but 
always did think that um, stock levels are going to be lower. Now, in any given time, you know, as we know, uh, being on the being in the coal face, uh, if those stock levels are low, your values uh, do hold up. And if you are already in a an owner in a popular marketplace, and whether it be that you know your area, their area, the Rhine, and general locations, eastern suburbs, inner west, wherever it may be, um, you're in quality blue ribbon. Uh, real estate sectors. Mm. And if there's low stock levels, regardless of the demand, your values are going to hold up. And, mm. um, you know, we wouldn't like to think of not thinking we've got to think positive. This is not going to drag on for, for an mm. extended period of time. So, um, you know, yeah, before, no, it's going to be, a, I think, a slow burn as well. As we know, the market was going fantastically well mm. right up until there had been some great growth. Um, you know, in the last half of last year, at least this first quarter of this year, then obviously it stopped. It stopped and there had been, has been a, a bit of a correction there. So yeah. if you are a buyer there that, you know, as we know, that has, um, you know, their employment all short up, um, finances short up there as well. It's, it's a good time to, if you haven't been thinking about it, it's a good time to definitely think about what we should be doing and should we be buying now and speak with speak with the local agents in the area, speak with a, a buyer's agent, uh, you may know because um, we are, you know, as professionals, we're at the coalface and we normally get a grasp on what's happening in the marketplace. As you know, Mark, before, you know, um, the, the media start writing about it and start reporting on it. So, 100%. I couldn't agree with you more. And, mate, it's been, it's been great having this chat this morning with you and getting to know sort of how, you, how you're how you discussing with buyers and, and overall qualifications and obviously how you're doing things because it's definitely changing times. But like I said, over the next few weeks, I think we're sort of going to bounce, bounce into a sort of new way of working again, but keeping some of these... Mm -hmm. Some of these little things that we're doing now, just the, the usual normal, the normal day now. So, so it's going to be exciting. Uh, but thanks for coming on, on board this morning, Adrian. It's mate, it's great to catch up. And and yeah, I'm sure I'll speak to you over the next week or two with some of your buyers. Pleasure, Michael. Thanks for the invite. Everybody have a good day and good luck out there. Thank you so much. Thanks, mate. Speak to you soon. All the best. Cheers.